Hello, I'm Jen Wilson, Senior Programmer, and welcome to this Film Independent Presents Festival Visions Edition Q&A. Special thanks to our lead sponsor, HFPA, our media sponsor, KCRW, our virtual screenings partner, Vision Media, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Today, we're spotlighting a short film called Monarchist by Diana Larea that played in the 2022 Miami Film Festival. And with us to do this Q&A from Miami is their director of programming, Lauren Cohen. Welcome, Lauren. Hi, thank you. And thank you so much to Film Independent for putting this together. And thank you, Diana, uh, for being here. Uh, this film showed at the most recent Miami Film Festival and was definitely an audience favorite. Um, it's a perfect film for Miami and it's a super important film and a super important topic for Miami and for all of Florida. Um, before we launch in to talk about the film, I would love to hear a little bit more about you and your kind of journey to becoming a filmmaker and what inspired you to uh, become a filmmaker. Well, um, hello to everyone and thank you for having me and thank you to Film Independent. It's it's kind of a, a dream to have <laughs> my first uh, directorial debut, actually, because I've been an editor for, for a long time, but this is the first one that I have the opportunity to direct. Um, well, my journey, um, it was like, you know, like a kid's dream pretty much at 13. I think I was pretty sure that pretty much that I wanted to leave Peru because I'm because I'm from Peru and I saw that I didn't have that many opportunities to actually do and practice filmmaking or a place to to study over there so um so I just convinced my parents so I could come here to Miami and study and then pretty much my journey started as an editor so I I've, I've been an editor for more than 10 years um, in different institutions and channels and then I move on to do a little bit more photography and then I've been mixing everything and <laughs> photography, editing, and now directing. And um, and it's been it's been wonderful. And um, I think like most of my editing work have been related to migration. Mm -hmm. So it all makes sense when I had the opportunity to 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 do Monarchas because it was also about it. Yeah, no, and I think honestly, like hear, hearing your background makes so much sense when when you see the film, because I think you obviously as a, the editing is incredible. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, but I think before we get into that, I would love to hear a little bit about um, this is your directorial debut. Um, tell me a little bit about what that was like and the challenges of making your first film. Um, it was great. It was a great opportunity, thanks to Ulaid and uh, Community Justice Justice Project. It, this was a, um, a collaboration that is called Pass the Mic, and I was selected mm -hmm. by Ulaid. And they, um, what they did is they they gave us um, different organizations. Um, I mean, let me explain this better. <laughs> They uh they join us with different organizations mm -hmm. and then once we were we knew what these organizations were doing that we selected who we wanted to work with. So right away when I heard about We Count that worked with uh in migrants in um in Homestead, um I was completely uh you know I felt like this is the place where where I want to tell this story and um and that's how I ended up you know, um, join, not join, sorry. <laughs> That's how I ended up um, working with We Count and with um, Alejandro and Pedro. Because, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because I was like, um, it, it called my attention, the problems and the injustices that were, that were happening with them. Yeah, absolutely. So was, was the topic of like wage staff, was that something you were already very familiar with before making the film or was your kind of exposure to We Count, what kind of kind of yeah. got on your radar. It was my first time. And actually, to be honest, at the beginning, I was a little bit nervous because I was feeling, how can I make such a problem? Um, how can I put it in the screen? How can I mm -hmm. make it look beautiful and poetic, but also, um, you know, focusing on the, pro on the problem and also focusing on them, not trying right. to victimize them, to make mm -hmm. them like, oh, well, everything is bad for them. No but to actually show how they grew through the process of, you know, of fighting this guy who was, who was not paying them. 
Yeah. So that's that. So at the beginning, I was scared because I'm like a, the kind of things that I do and that I should. Usually, I want to make everything poetic and cinematography beautiful. So it's right. like, how what can I make which the beautiful <laughs> that's a topic? And I was super scared that it looked like a like 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 a little video from the news. I just didn't no, want that to happen. At all. So that's no. how I get the butterflies. You know? I think it's <laughs> very rare to see a, a documentary that. Uh, I think has such a beautiful look to it that that complements the story and what you're trying to accomplish. Because like you said, it's not about making them out to be victims. I think your film, if anything, is very empowering to them. And I think that is really, really hard to do. Um, you, you clearly see your background as a very visual artist, as well as an editor here, um, in a time when it feels like every single movie is over three hours nowadays. Yeah. Um, it is incredible to see a film that a short film is able to communicate so much and do so much in such a short period of time. Tell me kind of how your editing background um, kind of came into this, because I imagine that it would have been very easy for this to be much longer. But the fact that you are able to tell a large portion of the story in only 12 minutes, um, what was how did you go about doing that? Well, it was it was, of course, like editing is hard. It's hard it's because hard. you have and also like you have all this information that is pretty important. And then it's like, what do I cut? And how mm -hmm. do I do I keep telling the story in the right way without removing important information? So what what I did is like I, I focus on how they they their journey, the journey that Pedro and Alejandro had, like a little bit of their background on how they got to this country, a little bit of the problem without having to really just tell all the bad things that happened because I didn't want to do that. And then really I wanted to let me know what they did and what they want to show to other people. Like now they they became also like a activist. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to be super shy and they actually had a transformation. So that's what I wanted to focus on and the transformation that we all can have. You know, like sometimes we think like, oh, no, I come into this country and because you're an undocumented immigrant, then you just don't have the same opportunities. And people actually, you know, you are oppressed. They don't pay you enough, you know, so mm -hmm. the quality of life is not is not good. So I wanted to, in a little bit of time, just put them in a, you know, like. I want people to respect them, you know, I wanted to show some dignity because that's what they want. They want respect, dignity, not that you look them down. They really want to be looked up. And I think they, their transformation was amazing because they now they are like a spoke people. So they're always like, you know, fighting and they speak like with such power, you know, mm -hmm. like when they speak, I'm like, uh, I get the chills because because they have a lot of power and they're like, you know they're short they're short <laughs> super <laughs> powerful so that was really beautiful and I wanted to portray that and and you know and mix it with the butterflies to make it you know to put it a parallel also with the transformation and the metamorphosis also that the butterfly does mm -hmm. and you know related with the the monarch butterfly is the is the symbol of migration because they travel you know, from Canada and the West Coast to, to Mexico. So I just wanted to, and they are from Guatemala. So for me, it all made sense. And it I raised butterflies. Me. So I had the I had the footage and I had the butterflies with me. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to make it um, more poetic and beautiful also for them. No, you definitely did. And I think um, it is it's such a beautiful film to look at beyond being um, beautiful what you did with their story. Um, are you still kind of in touch with them? Can you tell us any more about kind of, where their story has taken them. Yes, beyond what we I'm saw still, actually, actually, uh, yesterday I was texting them because I've mm -hmm. been also a little bit worried now with all the the new law here in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been, um, you know, uh, asking them if they are doing good, their family, how the work's doing. Um, they haven't been able to really recover the money uh, yet because mm -hmm. the, the, the boss, it's, I guess he's, you know, like showing fake evidence, probably that he already paid them, but they are they are still fighting. They are still fighting because they do want to. If they are not gonna get the money, they need respect and they need to show that this guy is just a bad person. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, we keep in touch. And and actually, now that I just got back to the states, I'm gonna I'm gonna visit them 
in a little bit like in during these days because they um pedro has a beautiful family they make the most delicious tamales and they're like and we like to get together we we're still talk and that's so amazing i mean between between what you're doing with this film and we count i think you're doing so much great not just for them but for for um so many people like them and so many workers who are just trying to make a living um it's really really important and i just want to say before we wrap up um do you kind of know what your next project is do you have any idea what you want your next film to be <laughs> yes well my um, the one i'm working on that is in pre-production it's also um it's also a documentary that it's about also Im Im immigrants but indigenous immigrants from central america and south america and how they are still preserving their languages, their dialects. Um, we are so used to speaking Spanish or Creole and English in Miami, but we don't know that there are people that don't even speak Spanish and they speak their dialect back home and they mm -hmm. come to the States and they are raising their kids in dialect. Some of them in Mayan and some of them like also like well, people from, uh, from the Andes, like I'm from Peru. So um, some of them are, uh, are raising their kids also teaching them Quechua. So what I wanna do is like also focus on those languages and the language keepers who are still, even though they are super far from their home and they're here and they're still trying to preserve their language. So that's my next, <laughs> that's my next project also related to amazing. migration and preservation because I care a lot of preserve about preservation. So hopefully, you know, we can have it ready soon. Yes, and that's not a short film or a feature. It's a short. A short. Well, a short, not that short, but that short. <laughs> a little longer. A little bit longer than 12 minutes. You know, well, that sounds so amazing. And yeah. um, I can't wait to see it. I know you're going to have an incredible, incredible career. And anyone who sees um, Monarchos is going to be incredibly touched by it. It's so important. So, Diana, thank you so much for joining me for this Q&A today. Thank you so much, Lauren. I hope to show you the next, my next work very soon. I can't wait to see it. Thank you.